In this video, we shall discuss how to calculate fire insurance claims when there is undervaluation of stock and average clauses applied. I have already uploaded another video which explains what is fire insurance claims and how to calculate amount of claim when the stock is fully insured, that is there is no average clause. So the link I have given it in the description box. If you have not watched that video, watch that video and then come back to this video. This is the question that I have taken. A fire occurred in the business. So this is the question that I have taken. A fire occurred in the business premises on 10 10 89. From the following particulars ascertain the loss of stock. Stock on 1 1 88 is 30,600. Purchases during 88 is 1 lakh 22,000. Sales during 88 is 1 lakh 80,000. Stock on 31 12 88 is 27,000. Purchases from 89 to 80, uh, 10 10 89 is 1 lakh 47,000. Sales from 1 1 89 to 10 10 89 is 1 lakh 50,000. The stock was always valued at 90 percentage of cost. The stock saved from fire was 1,80,000. The amount of policy was 63,000. We have to prepare an average clause. Uh, sorry, there was an average clause in the policy. So with this information, we have to prepare the amount of claim. So in this question, the GP ratio is not given. So the first thing that we have to do is, in this question, the GP ratio is not given. So the first thing that we have to calculate is GP ratio. So for calculating GP ratio, we have to prepare a trading account for the year before the fire accident. See in the question, the year is 89. We are preparing a trading account for the year 88. We are preparing the trading account for the year immediately preceding the year of fire accident. Okay, for preparing the trading account, in the debit side, we will usually record opening stock. The stock that is given in the question is 30,600. But it is given that the stock was uh, always valued at 90% of cost. That is from the value of cost. We, we all know that in the trading account we will record stock either in the cost price or market price whichever is less. And we have to record the value of stock at 100 percentage of its cost price but here there is under valuation we are valuing it only at the 90 percentage so we have to convert it to 100 percentage how to do that see first we will record it as two opening stock in the question the amount of stock that is given is 30,600 into this 30,600 represent what value that represent 90 percentage of stock we want to know what is 100 percentage so it is 100 divided by 90 or i'll tell you an easy way of remembering whatever is the valuation of stock write it in the denominator if it is 80 in the denominator write it as 80 if it is 70 in if it is 70 in the denominator write it as 70 in the numerator you write what percentage you want we want it at 100 percentage so in the numerator i'm writing it as 100 Okay, so 30,600 into 100 divided by 90 will give you 34,000. So 34,000 is the value of stock. After recording stock, we will record purchases. I look into the question. In the question, we don't have any purchase returns. So whatever is the purchase during 1988, it is 1,22,000. I am recording it as it is 1,22,000. Okay, then we don't have any direct expenses. So I'm moving on to the credit side and we are recording sales. In the question, we don't have any sales returns. So we are recording the sales in the year 1988. It is 1,80,000. After recording sales, we have to record closing stock. So by closing stock, since all the stock is valued at 90% less than the cost price, we have to convert it into 100%. So the value of closing stock that is given in the question is 27,000. So 27,000 into 100 divided by 90. Answer that we get is 30,000 rupees. So converting undervaluation stock into the correct value is whatever is the percentage of undervaluation you write it in the denominator. If the undervaluation is 80 percentage, 
in the denominator you write it as 80 in the numerator you write what percentage you want we want to get the 100 percentage so in the numerator i am writing 100 so 100 divided by 90 now tally your account total is 2 lakh 10 thousand rupees and i am writing the total on both the sides balancing figure is 54,000 which is the gross profit to gross profit within bracket b dot f after calculating the gross profit we have to calculate the gp ratio i have already told you how to calculate gp ratio in the previous video it is nothing but gross profit divided by sales into 100 the gross profit in this problem is 54,000 divided by sales is 180,000 into 100 the answer answer that you get is 30 percentage so the gp ratio in this question is 30 percentage after calculating the gp ratio we have to calculate the memorandum trading account so the memorandum trading account for the period ending 30 sorry 10 10 89 we have to start with opening stock so two opening stock we all know that previous year's closing stock previous year's closing stock is next year's opening stock we have already converted that into 100 percentage value so i am writing it directly in the amount column it is 30000 after recording opening stock we have to calculate purchases in this problem we don't have any purchase returns so i am taking purchases from 1189 to 101089 it is 1 lakh 47,000 in question we don't have any direct expenses so I am moving on to the credit side and I am recording sales the sales from 1189 to 101089 is 1,50,000 there is no sales return so I am writing the amount directly in the outer column then we have to calculate gross profit gross profit is 1,50,000 whatever is the sales value into GP ratio. The GP ratio that we have calculated is 30 percentage. So, 1,50,000 into 30 percentage, 5,000 is the gross profit. And this, after calculating this, we will tally your account and the total that I get is 2,22,000. And the balancing figure is 72,000 which will be the stock on date of fire. Within bracket B dot F. Okay. After calculating the stock on date of fire, usually in the previous problem, uh, that is in the previous video i have told you this is the formula for calculating amount of claim that is stock on date of fire minus salvage value this formula this amount of claim formula we will apply when the stock is fully insured and when there is no average clause but here look into the question they have clearly given that there is an average clause in the policy so this formula we will calculate and find out this is not the amount of claim but we are trying to find out the actual loss we use this formula and find out what is the actual loss so what is the actual loss substitute the value stock on date of fire is 72000 minus salvage value look in the question it is given as 18000 so that is the salvage value so minus 18000 54000 so after calculating this actual loss we have to apply the average clause formula the average clause formula is equal to insured stock insured stock divided by stock on date of fire into actual loss so i repeat the formula insured stock divided by stock on date of fire into actual loss so now i am substituting the values the insured stock is nothing but the amount of policy it is 63000 so i am taking this 63000 is the insured stock 
divided by stock on date of fire that we have calculated is 72,000 into actual loss. See, I have calculated the actual loss here. It is 54,000. So the amount of claim that I get finally after substituting this values is 47,250. I hope you understood this. Uh, what I have done here is usually the formula for calculating amount of claim that we have done in the previous video is amount of claim is equal to stock on rate of fire minus salvage value. When will we apply this formula? We will apply this formula when the stock is fully insured and there is no average clause. But in this problem, it is given clearly that there is average clause in the question. So what we will do, this amount of claim formula, we will take it as actual loss. The amount of claim formula will be taken as actual loss. So substituting values, 72,000 minus 80,000, the actual loss in this problem is 54,000. After this, we will apply the average clause formula. The average clause formula is insured stock divided by stock on date of fire into actual loss. So the insured stock is 63,000. This I have taken from the question. This is nothing but the insurance policy value. So 63,000 divided by 72,000. Stock on date of fire that we have calculated in our memorandum trading account that I have written here and actual loss. Actual loss is what we have calculated here. So uh, by substituting these values, the amount of claim that we get is 47,250. So I hope you understood this problem. I have, I have one more question. Look at this of 31.12.86. The good on of a trader caught fire. The following information is gathered. Year 3 years are given 84, 85 and 86. The sales value for the 3 years is given and the gross profit for 2 years is given and for the 3rd year we have to find out. The opening stock of goods on 1.186 was 1,65,000 and purchases amounted to 4,60,000. With this we have to calculate the amount of claim. So since uh, the GP ratio is not given, we are calculating the GP ratio. Usually for calculating GP ratio, I told you we have to prepare a trading account. But in this problem, there is no need to prepare trading account because the sales value and the gross profit is given. Uh, the formula for GP ratio is gross profit divided by sales. So if we do this, I will get the GP ratio for the year 84. In the same way, gross profit divided by sales will give me the GP ratio for the year 85. So there is no need to prepare trading account. I can directly calculate GP ratio. What is the uh, gross profit for the year 84? It is 1,80,000. What is the sales? It is 6 lakhs into 100. That I get is 30 percentage. Then calculating GP ratio for the year 85. The amount of gross profit is 1,98,000. The value of sales is 6,60,000 into 100. Profit percentage that we get is 30 percentage. So we know what is the GP ratio. Now calculating the memorandum trading account. In the memorandum trading account, we will record opening stock to opening stock. Look into the question. The opening stock on 1186 is Rs. 1,65,000. I think the year I have written it wrongly here. It is 86. So the opening stock is 1,65,000. Record purchases. There are no purchase returns. The value of purchases amounted to 4,60,000. Then we will record sales. Sales for the year 1986, it is given here. It is 6,48,000. Now we have to calculate gross profit. Gross profit is nothing but sales into GP ratio. The GP ratio that we have calculated is 
30 percentage to 1 lakh 94,400. Now tally your account and calculate the stock on date of fire. 8 lakh 19,400. 8 lakh 19,400. Account date of fire is 1 lakh 71,400. Within bracket B dot F. Now in this problem, look the word average clause is not given. So there is no average clause. The no actual formula, the usual formula amount of claim is equal to stock on date of fire minus salvage value. The stock on date of fire that we have calculated is 1,71,400. And in the question C, there is no stock salvage. So minus 0, there is no stock salvage. So this will be the amount of claim 1,17,400. So I hope you understood how to calculate when there is undervaluation of stock and when average clause is given in the question. Thank you for watching.